variation is a difference in species genes. So if we take a look at a variation of humans, it's very easy to see the variances between you and I. But you might not think corn being a having much variation. Corn looks like corn. But each plant is individual. This corn here is all from one species. We have very yellow or white corn all the way to a very golden corn and a variety of different cob sizes. The middle flower here, we have a variety of shades of purple. And the last picture here is of the peppered moths. There are lighter moths and there are darker moths. Before the Industrial Revolution, the lighter moths were able to survive better because they were harder to see on the tree. So if you were a bird coming to eat the moth off the tree, you're going to eat the dark ones because they are much easier to see than the light one, allowing the light ones to live. But as the Industrial Revolution was starting to get going and there was a lot of coal-burning plants near, nearby, it turned most of the trees darker. As the tree got darker, the darker moths were able to survive better, and now the white ones were standing out. So the, there was a shift because the adaptation of having a darker tone allowed those darker moths to stay alive. We have survival of the fittest. The definition of fitness would be how well the organism can survive and reproduce. So the more babies, the more fit. If we take a look at a population of bacteria that has different levels of resistance, the lighter colors are lower resistance and the darker colors are higher resistance, meaning that they can resist an antibiotic better. And then when they're placed in an environment of antibiotics, only those that have the high resistance are able to survive. Anything with the low resistance is going to die off and not be able to reproduce. Only the genes that have the resistance are able to be passed on. Those are the adaptations that are beneficial that are able to be passed on. So the ones that are high resistance have a better fitness level. And then we have overpopulation. We have individuals that have a variety of traits. The population of a given species will produce more offspring than, sur than can survive because of the variations. Those traits that are better suited for the environment are going to survive and be able to be passed on, and those traits that are less suited are going to start to die off and not be passed on. So in this picture, the green and the red are favored. So in the next generation, there's going to be more green and red, and then the next generation, there's going to be more green and red, and there's going to be less blue. And that's because the blue, for whatever reason, didn't have traits that were beneficial and are not as likely to pass on their genes and reproduce. If we take a look at Darwin's finches and natural selection, we can take a more modern day look at the beak size. If we look from 1975 to 1979 and then look at beak size, we can see at first that the beak size was fairly low at just about 9.5. And then in 1977, there was a drought causing the birds with the larger beaks to survive because they needed, it was harder for those with smaller beaks to survive because the food was, because they were not able to eat the food that was available during the drought. So the beak size got considerably larger in a short period of time and then that leads to the birds here down the line to have larger beaks. So we can see within a couple years that the larger beaks were being um, selected for. If we take a look at artificial selection, this is a means of driving evolution through humans, driven by human wants and needs. We have three examples here. We have a cow that is extremely muscular. What has happened here is cows, the more muscular cows were chosen and allowed to reproduce, and those that were not as muscular were um, slaughtered before they were able to pass on their genes. The middle picture is corn. The first cob here is what corn used to be before kind of humans started playing with it. We started choosing cobs that had more plump kernels, kind of this is a mid 
grade um, or midline corn cob here. And again, it was chosen and chosen, chosen for more plump, more kernels per cob until we get to what we know today. And then dogs. Dogs are all driven from wolves, so they're direct descendants of the wolf. And basically, different people across the uh, world took that wolf and selected one way or another to get different breed dogs. For the Chihuahua, the smaller and smaller wolves were chosen and their descendants were, the smaller dogs were chosen until we have the Chihuahua. And then we have the Great Dane on the other opposite end of the spectrum. Larger and larger wolves were chosen until we got the Great Dane. Many problems have arisen from our artificial selection as messing with nature. The bulldog, we have bred bulldogs to have such large round heads that it is very rare that a mother can actually birth their own puppies because their head is so large it can't fit it through the birthing canal and they have to have a c-section. Roosters we've bred to have such beautiful plumage and look pretty that we kind of neglected their temperament and created raping roosters where the roosters would rape and kill the chickens and that's just not beneficial if you are a chicken farmer that all your chickens are dying. And then we've bred turkeys, the turkey that you have on Thanksgiving, to have such large breasts for nice breast meat for um, that Thanksgiving dinner that they are unable to actually mate themselves. They all commercial turkeys are artificially inseminated. If we look at common ancestry or common descent, Darwin jotted down in his notebook this picture here looking at basically an organism. We have that organism number one branching off to create all these other organisms along the way. This doodle here was one of the few illustrations in his On the Origin of Species book showing all the different branching off, um, kind of that common ancestor down at the bottom and the branches off as you go along. This is today's tree of life. In the center we have the common ancestor and then all the different species kind of branching out from that. This tree was made from uh, DNA comparison. Descent with modification is the mechanism that Darwin proposed for the arise of new species and that all species descended from an ancient common ancestor. And these are the things that you should know.